Oh my god, there you are. I'm so excited. Today, I am doing a makeup tutorial. That's right. I am adding to the pile of literally thousands of makeup tutorials on YouTube just to show you how I do my face. <laughs> now today's face is going to be what I normally do for a drag show, so there may be some techniques that you could use for day-to-day -day wear, but a lot of the products that I'm using, especially the foundation, are going to be way too heavy for day-to-day -day use. Believe me, I've tried, you get clocked. So if you'd like to see how I do my face, keep watching and let's do this thing. Now to start, I have shaved my face as close as I can possibly get it. I've also shaved off my eyebrows. You do not have to do either of those steps. I just do them because I'm a Virgo and I'm super anal about getting a really clean, even surface. If you want to cover your brows, this is not the tutorial for you. I haven't covered my brows in years and I'm not very good at it. Now the first thing we're gonna do is use some primer. This is the e.l.f. Poreless Face Primer. It does a good job of both making the face a little tacky to hold the makeup better, but also filling in all of those pores and any other imperfections on your face. I used to have an oilier T-zone. If you have that too, you may want to use something like an eyeshadow primer just on the bridge of your nose and on your brows. That helps hold the makeup there a little bit longer and allows your makeup to last throughout the day. Now the way that I start my foundation is I start with my highlight. This is because my background is in art and my art background is in watercolors. When you work with watercolors, you're taught to mask off all of the lightest areas of your artwork before you start going in with anything darker because it's easy to build color and it's harder to take color away. So I took this philosophy and used it on my face. I'm going to start by putting all of my highlight on in the areas where I know I need it. So you want to put the highlighter everywhere that light would touch if the light source was coming from above. So that's going to be the highest points in your face. That's normally your cheekbones, the center of your forehead, the bridge of your nose. I put some on my chin because I have a very square chin and I want to round it off. And then I always put highlight underneath where I'm going to put the contour on my cheekbone. Now because I don't use any kind of color correction on my skin, and because I use clown white as my highlight, I often will add that to places where I know I need to add a little bit extra coverage. Now. A lot of people will use color correction to go over any stubble just to make sure that it doesn't show through the foundation. I don't use that though because I don't like to have any kind of an orange cast coming through. I also use clown white as my highlighter. So I just add a little bit of that and it helps cover up that extra stubble. This is where I go in and start adding in my neutral foundation color. And for that, I'm using a good old Kryolan pan stick. And you want to make sure to use a good amount of it and don't worry about it mixing in with your highlighter because that's the next step. And if you're not making funny faces while you're doing this, you're not doing your makeup correctly. At this point, you're probably looking at yourself and saying, oh my God, I look like a ghost. Now, there is one trick that you can use. You can swap the first two steps. You can swap the highlight and the foundation color. Doing that is going to give you a little bit of a more natural look. I like to go for a little bit more of a high contrast look for my drag. So that's why I start with the highlighter and I use a fair amount of it. So now that I look a bit ghostly. I'll often go in and touch up little areas that look like it needs more of the neutral foundation. And then as soon as that's done, I go in with my contour color and start blending that out. Now your contour, you want to put coming down from the top of your ear. You can come from the bottom of your ear, but that's going to give you a little bit more of a droopier, rounder face, and I want to lift my face because I already have a round face. I also want to cover up all of these places where I have a little bit of a lighter hairline, and then I bring it in 
just with a few dots. Dot the nose, dot the chin, a little bit under the lips, get that beautiful jawline, and then I always bring it down a little bit under the chin to get rid of that double chin. And blend. I always make sure to bring it back behind my ears because if you have that harsh line right there, people are gonna know it's makeup. Now the trick I use for my chin, because I have a very strong square chin, is I bring the darker foundation up onto the chin itself. And I just round it off like that. Notice how that already makes it feel a little bit more pointed. And then I just finish it with that little bit. And then I bring it over here. Now you may be saying, wow, it looks like you just painted on a beard. And you kind of did, but you're gonna blend it out with the other side of your sponge that still has some of the lighter makeup residue on it. The only bit of color theory you need to know this entire time is that warm colors round while cool colors cut. I use a warmer contour because I'm trying to round my cheekbone out. If I were trying to cut it and do say like a Disney villain or something like that, I would use a cooler color and do a harsher line and bring it down rather than a warmer color and bringing it up. And when it comes to forehead contouring, I actually bring my contour in fairly tight. I want it to look like I'm under a spotlight rather than under huge amounts of stage lights. And just like that, we're fully contoured. Now I do like to take a little bit more of my highlight and retouch a couple of places. One of those places is the tip of the nose. And I place a little bar. A lot of people will do a dot and then I bring the highlight down almost all the way. That way it creates a little bit of a button nose without going a little too far. There's only one last step that I do before I set my face. And that is to paint on my eyebrows and my lips. Because I'm going to be overlining my lips, I like to draw on with a darker brown that I will go over later with lipstick or with powders. And my eyebrows I like to draw on now because if I mess them up, it's easier to take them off now and fix my foundation than it would be to do if everything was powdered. Now to do my brows, I have a Ben Nye cream makeup and an old Ben Nye brush. I've been using this brush since high school. I didn't just admit that, don't worry about that. Get a nice new brush, but make sure it's something small. So there is a brow. You may be saying, wow, that's a super 90s brow. That's just the first stroke. Don't worry, we're gonna fix it. And that's where we are with the brows so far. I'm gonna quick do the other one off camera so that it matches and we'll be right back. And there are the finished brows. As you can see, I cleaned up underneath them, made sure all the lines were even, and then blended the clown white down towards my eye. But that's where we are now, and I'm gonna quick draw on my lips, and I'll be right back. Oh my god, it's so good to have an upper lip! I didn't want to use my stimulus check to get filler, so I just drew it on. This is where I use two colors of powder to set my face, both of them by Ben Nye. I use the super white because I am what? Super white to set all of my highlights. And then I set everything else with the fair powder. All right, now that everything is fully set on my face, we're going to go in and start kicking off some of the excess powder, but we're going to use it with a brush that has our contour color on it. And you're going to put the contour powder everywhere that you put the contour cream. This includes on the chin. We're going to redefine that round pointed chin rather than the square chin that I'm born with. And now that we're done with the neutral contour color, we're going to go in with a slightly darker one, slightly, not too dark, just to deepen the outside edges and make sure that our face is as three-dimensional as we can get it to be. The thing to know is that the more colors you use, the more dimensional your face will be and the more alive you will look. Right, we are fully contoured, we'll fully highlighted. What's next? I like to finish off my entire face, all of my skin, before I go into the eyes and lips. So what this 
this means for me is now is time to go in with blush and with highlight powder. So just like with my contour, I like to use two to three colors of blush. I'm gonna go in with some nice bright pinks and then I'm going to go in with a purple to deepen up certain areas. And I bring my blush all the way up into my temple because I love how much life that gives my skin. Like look at this side versus this side. And I know a lot of people are probably saying, oh, but you're supposed to put blush on the apples of your cheeks. Your apples of your cheeks are right here. Warm colors round. If I put blush right here, I would end up making my face look really round and really pudgy and I'm already pudgy enough. I don't need to do that. And I put that little bit of purple right in the corner because purple is a cooler color and it helps to kind of pull everything back together. And then I add the highlight powders just to the very tops of my cheekbones and a little bit under the eye and on the tip of the nose and chin. And when we're putting on our highlight, we're not trying to go crazy, crazy, blinding, flashing lights highlight. I just like to add a little bit of life back to my skin so it looks like it's skin rather than just foundation piled on foundation piled on foundation which is what it really is i also like to go in at this point and add just a little bit of whatever is left on my brush of the blush to my chin and the tip of my nose this was something that someone taught me back when i was in elementary school theater and it's something that i can't get away from and i just love because it brings so much life back into the face now i'm going to do something i don't normally do but i really want to do it this time so why not it could go horribly wrong but that's why you're here i'm going to take some brow pomade i can't say that brow pomade brow some brow pomade and put it on my eyebrows to make them look a little bit more natural and there we have our brows. Now for one of my favorite parts in the entirety of doing my face, eyeshadow. Go crazy. I love doing smoky eyes with a little bit of a winged liner just to blend in my eyelashes. So what I do to start that is I actually lay down a little bit of a dark brown cream makeup, the same makeup that I use to draw my eyebrows and draw my lips before they were set. And this is going to give us a nice dark base to work any eyeshadow into and make it easier for us to form that smoky look all right and now that we have that dark cream base on we're going to go over it with some eyeshadows i'm gonna do kind of a purpley blue look because it's one of my favorites to do and it's fun you can use like three four five different colors use as many colors as you like if you want to do big old garage doors with single color all the way up to your eyebrow absolutely go for it i'm going to use probably three or four when i'm shaping my eyeshadow i tend to go in a direction diagonally towards the center of my forehead the reason for that is it tends to create a little bit more lift since my eye wants to droop outwards if i push it in towards the center it's going to lift my eye and make me look a little bit more sultry rather than sad. Because I have lovely bags under my eyes, I tend to bring my eyeshadow a little bit farther down than most people would normally do, and I just rectify that with a few lashes on the outer end. That little bit of glitter just gives it some visual interest when you're up close with someone. It's not going to do a lot on stage. And now it's time for eyeliner. I like to bring it into a sharp point in the middle and then a point out here. I always start with the wing and then bring it in and I cover my entire eyelid with my liner because I have fairly hooded eyes and so it just makes it easier to be seen. It also creates a good base for my lashes. And there's the first wing. As you can see, it just gives a little definition to where my eye is and creates a good base for my lashes. And there's the finished eyeliner. I'm gonna go in and set it with some black eyeshadow, and then I'm gonna smudge out those outer edges a little bit more and I'll be right back. And now that the outside corners are smudged out and we have the perfect wings on, we're just gonna throw on some mascara and some lashes.
the point of the lash is to make the eye look bigger. So if your lash is drooping down or if it's coming down at the ends, it's going to actually close off your eye and make your eye look a lot smaller, which isn't going to be helpful. You want to make sure that as the lash glue is drying, you're pushing up on the lashes to make sure that they stay up and perky and happy all night long. And I'm also going to add a couple pieces of cut up 301 lashes down here on the bottom corner of my eyes just to make my eyes even bigger and add to the illusion that I've created with the extreme eyeshadow below my eyes. The last thing I want to do before I put on lipstick, I know I'm taking forever to get to that lipstick, but I like to finish everything else first, so it's the last thing I do. I'm going to put a couple of rhinestones just dotted around my eyes, and I'm going to add those on using some Prosade cream adhesive. Now that everything is done, it's time for lips. My favorite lipstick to use is one that actually matches my natural lip color, and that's because if I want to drink or eat or anything throughout the night, as it wears off, it doesn't look like it's wearing off. So I use a nice liquid lipstick, and I just fill in those lines that I drew before. Now if I was really feeling extra, I could get some really sticky gloss and push some glitter into it and it'll hold it all night and make it movable so the glitter won't start coming off throughout the night. So you start swallowing it and you start eating it and it's the most disgusting thing. But right now, I'm actually going to just leave my lip as it is. I'm going to step away, get into a full look and I'll come back and we can wrap it up. And this is the final look. Oh my god, I love it. It's beautiful. The big eyes always look better with big hair, big lips, big everything when it comes to me. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. I had so much fun sitting down with you and telling you some of my tips and tricks. I can't stop looking at myself on the monitor. I don't know where my eyes are supposed to go anymore. Eyes are up here. Eyes are up here. Thank you for tuning in. I'm going to have so many more videos coming up. Stay tuned. Full list of products will be in the description box below and all of my socials will be right here. So please check them out. If you end up following this tutorial and do your own look, please tag me on Instagram send me pictures send me messages let me know everything about it and how you liked it and I want to see these looks you're gonna look so amazing it was so good to see you thank you for joining me have a wonderful day bye Mwah.